Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Navigating the New Normal, Work from Home and Business Continuity Best Practices. My name is Jordan Fuger Burmeister. I'm the Marketing Manager over at Alir. And before we get into the bulk of today's presentation, we are going to go over just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Everyone has been placed on mute for the duration of the presentation. If you do have any questions, please feel free to submit them either via the chat to panelists function or the Q&A portion on the bottom of your screen. Um, a recording of this webinar will be sent out in the next couple of days following the webinar, as well as this recording and any other Allure webinar recordings are available on Allure.com or our YouTube channel. With that, I am going to turn it over to Richard Merrill to introduce himself and get going. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar about overcoming operational obstacles. My name is Richard Merrill. And I'll be going over the agenda and doing some more introductions in just a moment, but I just wanted to pause and um, really say to all of you from Alir, from the Alir family, that we hope everyone is healthy, we hope everyone is safe, um, and we are just in a small way trying to help all of you overcome some of the challenges that we're all dealing with. I myself live in San Francisco, um, I believe now two thirds of the country is in some sort of work from home um, lockdown. And it, it, those lockdowns have now been extended for almost the entire month of April. Um, I believe we're locked down in San Francisco until May 1st. So anyways, we all know this is a very challenging time for, for many of you. And again, Alir just wanted to do something to try to help um, overcome some operational obstacles. Um, some of you may be facing as a, uh, we all adjust to this new normal. So today, what we want to talk about, um, again, after some quick introductions about myself, is focus on two main topic areas. One is some work from home best practices. We sent out some information last week that was very well received um, and had a lot of people asking us for some additional advice and some additional information. So we thought we'd pull together a little bit of a deeper dive and give some people some advice about how to work from home. Um, we also thought we would take a, uh, a, um, an opportunity to discuss with some of you around reinforcing operational resiliency, whether you are a small company, a medium company, a large company, a government entity. Um, we just wanted to share some, some um, basic advice around improving your operational resiliency during these challenging times. But first, a quick introduction about myself. Um, my, again, my name is Richard Merrill. I'm in a partner with Alir. I leave our service execution pillar, and I have about 20, 25 years experience helping companies overcome um, issues, helping them improve their processes, helping them figure out a strategic direction and path. But perhaps more important than any of that, I have over 15 years experience working remotely, working on the road, being a road warrior, whatever the case might be. So supporting my clients um, in hotel rooms, from, from working from home, um, and many of my Alir colleagues, uh, many of the partners of Alir have even more experience, some 20, 25 years experience working remotely. Um, so it's something we've been doing for a long time. Um, speaking to you via video conference or on a conference call is something that we're quite accustomed to. But we know many um, folks are maybe dealing with this for the first time. So what we wanted to do is just provide some of our own knowledge, some of our own learnings um, to all of you. And again, hopefully in some small way, provide some assistance to everyone during these extraordinary times. But let's get started with some work from home best practices. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about three um, main areas. One are some tips to stay productive, um, something that everyone could basically use. And then take a moment to speak to all the managers out there um, um, and give some advice to each of you as well as some of the IT departments. Um, so we'll go through each of these sections um, and, and basically hopefully give some advice about working from home and, and staying um, productive. Um, but with that, let's dive right into tips for, tips for staying productive. And one of them is continuing your normal routine. Um, we really recommend waking up at your normal time, setting that alarm clock, um, getting showered, getting dressed, and following all your normal morning activities. Um, if you have a cup of coffee in the morning, continue to get a cup of coffee in the morning, right? 
Um, and then also try to carve out some dedicated office space. Um, I live in San Francisco. I have a relatively small apartment. Um, I, don't, I don't have the luxury of necessarily having a separate home office. Many of us don't have that luxury. So if, if, if you don't have a separate home office or a separate spare bedroom or something like that where you can carve off some space and close the door, then um, look to find something that works for you. It might be as part of the kitchen table. Um, it may just be a quieter area of the bedroom that you can use. Um, but just having some place where all of your documents are stored, your notepads, your pens, your laptop, um, a good lighting source can really make a difference. And then, um, you know, part of the normal routine is we get up, we go to work, we're at work eight, nine, 10, sometimes more hours a day. Um, obviously during this time, all working patterns have significantly be impacted, but try to maintain some of those normal working patterns as much as possible. Open up your laptop, be available during normal working hours via the laptop, via your phone. And then just like we do during the normal work day when we're in the office, uh, we rely on lunch breaks and that three o'clock caffeine pick me up to keep you going. Do the same thing when you're at home. Um, take those mental breaks. Um, the mental breaks help keep you productive in the office. They're gonna help keep you productive at home as well. In addition to that, we're really recommending over communicating during this time. Um, sometimes people wait um, to be asked about a status before they share it. What we're recommending is be a little more proactive. Reach out to people and let them know what is the status of things you're working on. And then making sure everyone is aligned, everyone is on the same page. For those who've worked with Alir in the past, they know that's a big thing for us, right? Bringing teams of people together, helping break down barriers, helping open up lines of communication. And that really is more important now more than ever. And, and, but to do it, it's not a hallway conversation anymore. It's going to be something like we're doing today with it's a video conference, an instant message, a chat, a phone call. Um, so definitely leverage all of those tools and, and, and make sure you're, you're, you're taking advantage of the technology. And so that might mean that, you know, some of us for years may have resisted putting work email on our phone or the work calendar on our phone or downloading that instant messenger app from work. But take those few extra moments you might need to have your phone set up with all of that information so that you can be available. And then of course, continue all those good best practices about saving your documents to the drive, uh, whether it's a shared drive or a Google Drive or someplace in the cloud. You want to make sure that we'll, while we're all physically separated, that we can all access each other's information and documents. And then, as we've done today, be willing to turn on the camera for video conference calls. This is something that um, doesn't come easy for a lot of us. Um, and we decided to turn it on, even though this is a one-way communication until we get to Q&A, of course. Um, it, we, we are, it does make a difference. Um, our Leo partners have been meeting very regularly um, and we all turn on the cameras and we're all able to see each other, um, read body language, and it just really breaks down and breaks down the physical distances and opens up the areas of communication. But we realize that it is putting unprecedented bandwidth um, it is uh, un unprecedented bandwidth demands on many of our home ISPs. And so part of what we're gonna be talking about today is managing expectations and being flexible. And so if, if multiple parents are home on a video conference call and the kids are streaming movies or doing video uh, learning, telelearning, then you may just need to carve out time um, if, if you have to be on a video conference call or use something that requires a little more high bandwidth, like going through a VPN <clears throat> to access your PeopleSoft or Oracle applications, and you really need the bandwidth, perhaps work with other members of your family to do something offline. And, and, and then return the favor, right? When they need the bandwidth, perhaps you do some things that are offline. Um, but it is important that we all monitor bandwidth um, so that none of us run into any problems. Because again, it's all about making sure we're staying productive and we're not having slow response times on our applications. But when I talked about managing expectations, um, it is important for all of us to do that. These are unprecedented times. 
many of us work from home on a Friday or a weekend and we're used to having the family around, but, but really everyone is home all the time right now. And, and it can, um, unless you're managing expectations, um, it can cause stress and lower your productivity. So, you know, what does that mean? It, it might mean on your work calendar, block out time to, to work with the kids on homeschooling. Now, I myself am not a parent. Um, I have a lot of nephews and nieces I really love, um, but many of our partners, many of our experienced consultants are parents and are dealing with homeschooling. So we are not uh, in the business of providing homeschooling professional consulting advice, but we do have a slide upcoming where we want to give some tips about that. But anyways, going back to, going back to this point, if you need to help your kids at a certain time, block it out on your calendar. That way your boss, your coworkers know not to bother you during that time. And then also let meeting participants know that you may be interrupted. Um, you might be getting a knock on the door or maybe a kid has come up to you and asked a question. Let people know that, go on mute, pause your video. Um, it's okay, it's something we're all dealing with. Um, and, and part of managing expectations also means letting people know if you have extra capacity. Some, some areas of the business have slowed down. Some people have additional bandwidth. If that's the case, uh, we talked earlier about being proactive and reaching out to people. Well, be proactive and reach out to your managers, your coworkers. Let them know you have a little extra bandwidth and might be able to pitch in and help out. Um, so again, we're all in this together. We all want to help each other through this. But some quick advice about homeschooling. So again, I love doing best practice research. I love talking to others and getting learnings. Um, so this is a very high level overview, but some tips that hopefully you will find helpful. Um, so we talked earlier about designating space for all of us to do our work. Well, kids are in the same boat. They need their own dedicated space. Um, and in those instances, they might need one or two. You know, every child may need their own little nook um, also, you know, children are used to loading up their backpacks, heading into school, doing all their work and bringing the backpack home, putting the work away. Um, th they, they need the ability to do that, whether it's um, a little shelf they can use or putting things back into their backpack. The same thing goes for us, right? Our laptops, our note papers are not going to just be strewn about all day long. That, you know, you're, you're looking to sort of fold up the office at the end of the day, they're looking to do the same thing as well. And then I think flexibility is key. Um, many uh, children, of course, go to school and get six, seven or more hours of continuous learning. Of, of course, there are lunch breaks and other breaks, but it's a long learning period. And that is not always going to be possible in the home environment. Um, so we may need to mix up, and there's some great advice out there that I was reading that perhaps carving out a few hours in the morning for school, then taking a break to get some exercise, do some creative activities, um, and then returning to school could be, could be a helpful pattern for many kids. And just getting two to four really good dedicated hours of time spread over the day can make a really big difference. And then um, just like we're encouraging employees to have meetings and to help keep each other up to date, we're doing the same thing for families, right? Um, sit the family down. This is something we used to do as a family all the time um, growing up in the 70s and 80s where we would have a family meeting. Um, and, and it's something I think may be important more than ever right now is to let the kids know that this is the new normal, um, at least for the time being. and that as employees each of us have responsibilities we have to you know maybe turn away from the child and turn towards the laptop um, they themselves need to understand that they have their own responsibilities or they may have to turn away from the from the games and back to the studies um, because many school districts are continuing expectations around studies and assignments and, and again, um, I'm not by far the expert in homeschooling advice, so I definitely recommend reaching out to the teachers, reaching out to the schools and, and getting that information and passing it along, particularly to the younger kids who may not have as direct a line of communication with their, with their teachers as perhaps a high schooler might. And then I really liked this saying, I found this in some of my research about give yourself grace. You know, many of us are not teachers, many of you are not teachers. Uh, 
it's been a long time since he may have worked a calculus problem. So, you know, rely on the teachers, rely on the school, rely on others to help in and, and, and help pitch in and um, give yourself a break if it doesn't go all according to plan. Um, we're all adjusting to this new normal and th this shall pass, but for now we, we all need to be flexible and be communicative and um, take it easy on each other. And, and, and so getting back to sort of the wider topic, which is best practices around, you know, working from home and improving your productivity. And, and a lot of that includes staying positive and being healthy and having a healthy mindset. Uh, a healthy mindset works when we go into the office. It also works when we're staying at home. So, you know, take a moment, take, get outdoors, take a breath of fresh air. We strongly recommend following local state and federal guidelines um, but most communities are letting folks go outside as long as you're maintaining physical distance we really recommend getting outside don't stay trapped inside all day and then um, if, if you don't have the luxury of having a home office with a nice chair which many of us don't many of us may be working on a bed or working at the kitchen table then just be a little extra aware of your seated position maybe be aware that to take more breaks, to stand up, to stretch. Um, we really want to be extra careful um, and prevent discomfort and prevent any ergonomic injuries. Um, because again, we're not, many of us are not seated and working in ideal positions. And then of course, outside of working hours, maintaining contact with family and friends. Uh, this is something Alira has done. Alira has opened up our Zoom video conferencing to all of our employees to use all the time. And I, and I really appreciate our leadership doing that. And um, it's something I'm, we hope other companies are doing. We're reading a lot of stories about it. And if your company's not doing it, maybe ask about it. <clears throat> because tools like Zoom, like video conference can be great ways for families to connect. And then we talked earlier about maintaining routines. Uh, so keep all of those healthy routines going, eating well, exercising, getting your sleep. And if your gym is closed, which most of them are, um, then you know, reach out to them and see if there's online options around workout classes and things of that nature. A lot of people are doing a lot of creative things and creating a lot of creative content. Um, and so it, it's not an easy environment, but um, a lot of people are out there helping pitching in and supporting each other as a community. Um, and so definitely take advantage of those resources. So moving beyond some of those general tips to stay productive, um, what I wanted to do is talk um, to some of you who might be managers, whether you're an AP manager, an AR manager, or a CFO, a payroll manager, whatever the case might be, what are some things you can be thinking about as a manager? And one of them is to make collaboration easier. If you haven't done this, Alira strongly recommends publishing a team contact list. You know, take a simple Excel file and list everyone's names and list the preferred method of contact. And if the preferred method of contact is cell phone, list the cell phone so everyone has access to that. You might also think about adding columns for preferred times to reach out to people. I mentioned earlier that it's helpful to block your calendars um, for homeschooling and other activities that might pull you away from the office. Um, a team contact list can share that information as well. And then we also recommend making sure it's easy for employees to have access to and set up video conferences and conference calls. We've all been in the meetings where eight or nine people are in the conference room and two or three people have to dial in and a minute or two before the meeting, you realize the dial-in information isn't there and it takes five or 10 minutes of stumbling to sort of get the call organized. Um, well, in our new temporary normal that, you know, everyone's remote, everyone's calling in. So just making sure your employees know what is the dial-in information and how to use it and how to share it can really um, make a difference in productivity. And we'll also talk to you about our Grippy tool. Um, those of you who've worked with Alira in the past know we love our, uh, our tools and our templates. And uh, many of you have used the Grippy tool. And for those who may not be familiar with it, we'll be sharing more on the next slide. But some other advice to managers is making sure everyone has access to systems. Some employees have an easier time getting into VPN than others, right? 
So making sure all those employees understand what needs to be done to tunnel into the systems and bring up um, the systems is really important, um, as well as other tasks like accessing email. I talked earlier about making sure your email or your instant message program is down, is down on your phone. Some employees may need help with that. So if you have a team meeting, maybe put that as an agenda item on your team meeting and make sure everyone goes through it together. Um, and even with all of that, though, we may see decreased productivity. Um, you know, if, if employees are used to having multiple monitors um, to do their work or using a mouse um, or just being able to have silence where you can like focus on something um, for an uninterrupted period of time, that may not necessarily be the case in a work from home environment. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about how you can maybe mitigate that. But, but in general, productivity may go down, so you may need to balance workloads accordingly. If you're used to equally distributing your work among the team, you may need to rethink some of that. Um, and just depending on each, how each person is responding um, with their level of productivity. And then um, another piece of advice is just be extra visible as a manager. Continue to publish to-do lists, action plans, let people know what's on the docket this week, what's on the docket for next week. If you're not having regular team meetings, definitely set them up, perhaps even a daily checkpoint. Um, and also think about having one-on-one -on -one meetings. Uh, this is something I do all the time. Well, I not only have a team meeting, but I reach out on a regular basis and have one-on-one -on -one conversations so people can raise concerns, they can raise issues. We can deep dive into a specific area of focus that they require in order to get their work done. Setting up those one-on-one -on -one checkpoints can be particularly helpful during this time. And so let's take a moment to talk about our Grippy agenda tool. So Grippy stands for goals and roles and process and interpersonal agreements. And so we at Allure um, believe strongly that in order to have a more productive meeting, people should really take a few extra moments to document this and attach it to the meeting invite and then we'll view it at the start of the meeting. And it basically it involves letting people know what's the goal of the meeting. What are you trying to accomplish? Um, and then letting everyone know what is their role. Um, what expectations do they have? Do, do people need to research something or come in having read a report in advance? Letting people know that in advance makes a big difference in increasing the level of productivity in a meeting when everyone is in the office and it is even more critical when everyone is dialing in remotely. And then letting people know what that process is. How are you going to accomplish the goal? If, if, the, if you're going to accomplish task A and you have to do it by first doing this, like analyzing data and then um, you know, brainstorming solutions and picking a solution, let people know that order of steps that you're going to go through um, and how you're going to tackle that problem. And then keep those interpersonal agreements out there and keep them published. Um, letting people know that one conversation is more important now perhaps than ever because it can be really hard to hear when two or three people are talking at the same time when everyone's dialed in. Also letting people know that if you have a lot of background noise, go ahead and hit mute. And then remembering to assume positive intent. We're all trying as hard as we can to get through this and to get our jobs done. Um, but, uh, but again, um, what we recommend is creating a grippy like this for your meetings, um, whether you type it out in the meeting invite, whether you put it in Word or PowerPoint and then attach it, it really doesn't matter. As long as you just take a few extra moments to document it and share it in advance, then it can really help a team meeting stay on track and stay focused. And don't forget some tools that some of you may have heard from us around parking lots. So a parking lot is, what if something comes up in the meeting that's not according to the goal? Um, or it comes up a little earlier in the meeting than you want to tackle it, go ahead and jot it down on the parking lot. If you've worked with Leo before, that typically means we go to a whiteboard and we put it down. Um, we had a partner meeting the other night where we were meeting and a couple of things came up that we just weren't ready to tackle at that moment. So we jotted them down in the, in, in the parking lot. Um, I, I believe I was taking notes at the time. I was sharing my screen. Everyone could see I put it in the parking lot. 
and, and, and then it can kind of close out that issue so you can go back to focusing on the goals. Um, so, so again, uh, some of those basic tools and techniques that we've been preaching for years are just extra helpful right now. And then some additional advice for managers. So let people know how to escalate issues. Where do they go for help? In the next section, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but for your own team, if they're having an issue, who do they call and how do they get help? Also, um, for managers who are used to having line of sight on their entire team and being able to see everyone at all times, we have to realize that that's not possible. That working remote means giving people the tools they need to get the work done without necessarily knowing what they're doing every moment of every day. Um, so micromanaging is something we've never recommended, of course, but at now more than ever, if, if you tend towards micromanaging, think about your own management techniques and um, think about um, uh, focusing a little more on just helping them get the work done as opposed to managing every step of the way. And then finally on this page, just talking about paying attention um, and thinking about the stuff that's getting in your way. Um, a lot of AR departments, AP departments, other departments, onboarding departments still have lots of paper. Trying to work remotely with a lot of paper is very challenging. Um, a lot of us have workflows where we are used to walking around and getting approvals, either verbally or wet signatures. Um, or we may be used to getting an approval for someone who simply is not available because unfortunately they're sick. Um, and, or, or, you know, we may have put off automating something. And so in order to get something done, it requires a lot of heads down, deep dive manual Excel work. Um, all of those are challenges that are making staying productive remotely increasingly difficult. And when we get back to the office, which we will be, um, but when we get back to the office, don't forget about these. Think about those situations and continue to improve um, your efficiency, your effectiveness um, by, by removing all of those barriers. Um, so that is sort of some general advice for managers. And what we wanna do is go into some advice for some IT departments. Um, and uh, so for IT departments, um, you know, we're rarely recommending that you prepare your help desks. Um, make sure they have all the information they need to keep everyone up to date. Make sure that they're mitigating um, help desk call spikes by publishing FAQs. Um, helping put out FAQs in advance can really help companies um, lower that call volume um, because people know how to um, solve some of those problems on their own. And then think about creating an advisory group. So an advisory group is a temporary forum where we're bringing together um, the business and the IT community to work together to figure out what's getting in the way of people working remotely um, and then figure out what those problems are and then publish those solutions and maybe give people an opportunity to dial in and ask for some Q&A. Um, so again, just some quick tips to the IT department. And the, the other big topic I want to talk about, and I know um, we're going a little long, um, getting a little short on time, um, but want to talk about enforcing some operational resiliency. Um, and so one of the things you can do is making sure that you really have access to cash flow data and income statement data. Um, so for those of you who are working in the finance side of things, um, we, we may be used to producing monthly um, statements. Um, we really recommend working with your teams to increase the level of reporting so that you have weekly or perhaps daily reporting and that you're analyzing that reporting to see what are um, your sources of cash, are those sources of cash being delayed? What are your non-negotiables in terms of your cash outflows? Um, on the income side and expense side, what are your discretionary expenses? Um, and then if your revenue were to take a dip, what would that do to your financial productions? Uh, and, and asking all managers really to look at individual budgets in order to reduce or postpone um, discretionary expenses. So in terms of operational resiliency, having access to that data is critical right now and having access to it on a more frequent basis is also quite critical. And we also recommend perhaps tracking all of your expenses in a single line item 
um, such as COVID-19 and throwing all of those expenses into that line item so that it's easy to track, which could make it easier to apply for government assistance programs. Some programs have already been announced. We expect additional programs to become announced. Two of the programs that have been announced um, by SBA for the smaller businesses, and again, we recommend going to sba.gov for complete information, but two programs um, you may be starting to hear about are the PPP and the EIDL program. These are both designed to help with operational resiliency of smaller organizations. PPP is focused on um, providing loans to businesses by the SBA to cover payroll expenses. You can see some of the information on your screen. The EIDL program is um, focusing on working capital loans for up to $2 million. Um, and those are being provided by your bank, but underwritten by the SBA. So these are two programs out there for smaller organizations. Um, go to sba.gov for some additional information um, and that may help you. And then, um, I, and I apologize, we're, we're, we're a little long on this, but I just wanna hit these really quickly. Um, one of the things Alira is recommending is to conduct a work, remote work assessment identify critical tasks and who is the primary and the secondary resource, um, if, particularly if the primary resource becomes ill, um, and then figure out what they need to get that task done and um, uh, so that you can help remove those barriers to them. And then uh, if, if that person, in order to get that task done, uh, perhaps needs a second monitor or needs a mouse, um, then prioritize those needs and will and help get those assets deployed to them so that in their home environment they they have tools they need to increase their productivity and then of course sharing things like we're doing today sharing tips and guidelines um, can be helpful as well on the communication plan side um, again this can be done in Excel Identify your key suppliers, your key customers, your key employees. What's the preferred level of uh, contact with them? Uh, you know, what channel of communication do they prefer? Uh, what is the process for writing that communication, approving the communication, and sending the communication? And then keeping track of what you've sent to who and to when. Um, we, again, we're stressing over communication at this point, but we don't want to inundate people. Um, and we, so building a simple Excel tracker of who do I need to tell, what do I need to tell them, and when did I tell them can be really helpful during this time. And then doing pulse checks to monitor how everyone is doing. That could be as sophisticated as sending a survey. It could be as simple as picking up the phone and just checking in on folks. So Aaliyah is here to help. Um, we're here to help with free advice as much as we can. Um, if people need advice and assistance, improving their reporting and analytics capabilities so they can get their cash flow and financial statements more accurate and more frequent, let us know. If you need help with an, uh, a readiness assessment or want to draft a communication plan or need a template or tool, please reach out. We're, we're happy to help. Um, and or if you need operational um, uh, sort of coverage. Uh, one of our clients uh, was concerned about covering payroll and what if one of their key payroll resources gets sick. Um, they live in, operated in California where I live and um, you know basically uh, we're working with them to make sure that if one of the resources becomes sick that we're able to step in and help them out. Um, so again we're trying to provide as much advice and guidance as we can to, to help everyone really get through this. And uh, now I wanna see if perhaps there's any questions that are out there. So I'm just checking if there are any questions that were submitted via the Q&A and I don't see any at the moment. So either I'm hitting all your points um, or uh, they're just not in yet, but let us know if you, if you have any questions. Oh, and I am seeing some questions come in. Um, so we will be sharing this information um, electronically after this presentation. Um, uh, you, those who uh, were invited and attended will get a free copy of this, of course. And then uh, let's see, 
uh, oh, I, I just a thank you. Uh, so a thank you uh, for us sharing this information. And again, we're happy to help during this time. Um, you know, our Leo family is not only the people who work with us, but our clients. Um, we've many of you we've worked with for many many years, and anything we can do, um, you know, we're happy to help. And it looks like maybe another question is coming in. Let me just check. <laughs> um, let's see here. So can you talk more about the ways to help everyone stay in touch throughout the day and the week? This is hard for my team. So that's a great question. Um, we've done that in a few different ways. One of the things we've done is create team text threads where um, all the partners of Alero have a text thread or all the members of my team might have a text thread and we're able to, on a certain work topic, get that text thread going and, um, and then disseminate the information. Another thing we've done, which is quite similar, is get in a group instant message going. Some of you may be familiar that you can send a one-on-one -on -one instant message, where you can also send a group instant message and get that instant message thread going. Um, and then I think the final um, uh, bit of advice there is regular team meetings. Even if it's only a 10 minute meeting at the beginning of every day, just letting people know what trouble are you having, what are you expecting to get done, um, can be a, a, a real game changer. So hopefully those are some quick helpful tips. And let us know, I think I'm covering all the questions, I'm checking the different ways. Um, but again, we will be sharing this webinar with all of you um, afterwards. Um, we, um, the Leo family continues to help all of you are healthy, all of you are safe. Um, recommend all of you are following the guidelines. Um, and uh, oh, have another question. So should text messages via cell phone be used? What about tracking better with email? That's a good question. So we're definitely not recommending you make major decisions um, with a text message. Uh, that type of thing really should be in an email thread. Um, if, if you're trying to pose a question and get some sort of um, agreement, um, having that in an email thread is very good. But if you just need to get the word out for something um, on a text message thread, it's a great way to do it. Um, letting people know that, oh, there's a reminder that this task needs to be done. That's a great way. So think about the method of communication um, can really make a difference. Uh, again, we put out some pieces about that a few years ago. Um, but basically, if you're trying to document a decision, trying to share a document, email is really the way to go. If you're just trying to get word out to remind people of a deadline or remind people of a task, a text thread um, can be a, a good way to go. Um, and in both veins, think about having distribution lists, right? Like a, an email distribution list or a text thread distribution list. Another question has come up with, my team has been fighting turning on the camera. Does it really make a difference? So that's a very interesting question. So our partnership group um, kind of went through the same thing where uh, we started turning on the camera and there were 10 of us. And I think two or three people would turn on the camera and everyone else would not. And, um, you know, Sometimes working from home means working in your pajamas. Uh, we, everyone gets that. Um, but again, we're recommending keep those normal routines, get up, get dressed, and then makes it easier to turn on the camera. And what we have found is in a team meeting, it really does make the difference in terms of team dynamics. So much of communication is um, reading eye contact, reading body language, seeing people nod their head or shake their head. Um, all of the reading body language makes such a big difference in a office team meeting and it, the video conference call does exactly the same thing. On a, on a lighter note, it's also really um, helped people who are home alone um, have an extra bridge of communication. So we, we found it has made a difference and we know it is uncomfortable, um, but in a team meeting, um, it can it can make a big difference. Let's see here. Um, trying to see if there's any other questions. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking a couple of different channels here. Ah, 
a good tip um, from Jordan, who is helping me organize this webinar, and I will pass it on, is open up, uh, a, you know, turn on the camera or, or turn on the comments call for an hour. And if any team member needs advice, they can just dial in during that hour. So just like you yourself have an open door policy where people can pop into your office, if you're doing heads down work, maybe just start the conference call um, on video or not. Um, and people who need assistance can just dial in and ask you those questions. That's a great suggestion, Jordan. Thanks for passing that on. Um, it's something we've been doing a lot internally with our sales team. Um, but particularly for people who just like to pop in, right? It's a way to electronically pop in. Let's see. Any tips for helping executive leadership overcome their suspicion of remote work? We are facing a lot of overhead of daily reporting and babysitting. They are convinced staff are not working. Uh, that can be that can be a challenge. I do realize that, particularly among different generations, right? Um, some managers think if they can't see you, then you're off um, in the break room having a coffee or, or goofing off, so to speak. And now that they really can't see you, there is that concern as well. And so my advice um, when talking to those managers is that it's more important um, to make sure the work is done than to make sure um, you understand every minute of every day that it took to get that work done, right? So what I've always, what one of my mentors told me early on in my career is as long as you're getting the work done, then um, I'm, I'm going to trust you, right? And so I think I would go back to those executives and say, are we getting the work done? Are we getting your reports to you on time? And if the things are getting done, um, then, then I think that will make a big difference. Now, if the work is not getting done, um, that, that's where you really have to go back to some of those earlier points about balancing the workload. Um, let's face it, some people are having more challenges working remotely than others. Um, some people are better at it. Some people have more demanding home environments. Um, it, in those situations, we may need to offload some of the work from them and give it to some other people in order to just make sure that work is getting done. But um, definitely focusing on the results has always helped me in conversations with executives. So let's see, uh, I think another question, how do you balance people working different hours? That's a great question and something I deal with all the time. As a traveling consultant who lives in San Francisco and has a lot of clients on the East Coast, you have to remember that um, if, if I'm going to work according to my clients' needs, that means I need to be on East Coast time, not West Coast time. So um, I think with your team, if, particularly if they're in different time zones, um, it may need to, to be aware of having the conversation with them about what do normal working hours mean. Does the normal working hour mean eight to five for you, or does it mean eight to five for your client or your customer or your supplier? And, and it may require coming in a little bit earlier or staying a little bit later and just adjusting the time frame accordingly. Let's see, I hope these are helpful. Um, just checking other questions. These are great questions. I'm, I love all the engagement. Um, let's see, I think, I don't see any other questions at the moment. Um, let's see if I'm getting any from my little friends at texts. I do not see any. And so again, um, thank you all so much um, uh, for participating. We're hopeful that um, the that in some small way, this makes working from home a little bit easier and gives you a little um, assistance in overcoming some of those operational issues. Definitely uh, reach out to us and let us know um, if you have any other questions, any other need. I'll pause here with this contact information. Um, you can reach out to Katie and Jake to forward the questions on to me and to the entire team. We're happy to help, we're happy to jump on the phone with you. Um, and, and get you the information you need. And again, uh, this meeting has been recorded, this webinar has been recorded, and everyone participating will get an electronic copy of it. So with that, I'll just check for questions one last time, and I don't see any. Um, so again, thank you all so much. We hope everyone is staying healthy, everyone is safe, and we all wish you the best, and I will talk to you later. <laughs>